Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I'm so appreciative for everyone who's been participating, commenting, sharing, um, liking, and just sort of engaging with the group. I love that. That's why I do these groups every month and I try to change it up and do different topics. This week was all about sort of spreading the love, you know, inviting our friends and our family and just a way for me to give you guys some clean eating tips, some new recipes to try, meal planning advice, and just kind of make, um, help you maybe start thinking about clean eating. If it's something that's been on your mind, you want to get a little bit healthier, but you weren't exactly sure where to start. I hope this week gave you some of those ideas. Okay. I was thinking about it this morning. I just finished my meal plan. I actually shared it in the group so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The meal plan template that I use is following a portion control um, container group. That's why they're, they're colored and they're set up like that. That's one of the templates that I use to help me keep on track because I know exactly how many greens, reds, purples, etc. that I eat every week. And so I just use an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of that. There's a million different varieties of templates, but I wanted to show you what I use week in and week out. Every Sunday, I do this meal plan. These are the types of things that I share in my challenge group. So if that's something that you're interested in, I did post um, how that you guys can sign up to get into that group. I have like two spots left. I might actually have one. I think I got another application this morning. So I have two spots left two or one, whatever. And so if you are interested, please let me know right away so we can start that conversation and I can understand um, what your goals are and hopefully try to get you into the group. Now, the reason that I wanted to share this post today is I wanted to give you guys some very specific things to think about when you sit down to do your meal plan. So the first thing that you want to think about is what's on your agenda for the week? It's, it, it would be impossible to put together a meal plan if I didn't first know what we have going on during the week. So before I even write anything down, I kind of do a rundown. I look at my calendar online. Mark and I are huge um, users of our Outlook calendars. We live and die by that thing. We put everything on it. So I look at the calendar and I see what do we have going on for just the week ahead? I don't care about what's happening the week after or at the end of the month. I just care about next week when I'm meal planning. So Monday is a work day. And after work, Mark is volunteering for Beverly's birthday. So he goes straight to that birthday party event and he won't be home until about nine o'clock. Sophie gets picked up by my mom after school. And so she stays at my mom's for dinner because apparently Grammy makes better dinner. Um, it's different. So I'm going to be by myself. So I don't need to plan a big family dinner. I need to just make sure that I have something for me. So that's easy. Um, easier to do and I don't want to then make a big family dinner and then no one's here to eat it. So I know what's going on on Monday. Um, another thing to think about is, you know, do you have activities and events? So Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Sophie has gymnastics, karate, and tap dance class. So we're like super busy and she has some sort of nature class during the day on Tuesdays that my parents take her to, so I don't have to worry about that. But I see it on the calendar so I know that um, in the Tuesday morning, I need to be prepared with a quick breakfast to get her out the door to make it on time for that class. Um, where are you going to be throughout the week? So now as you're starting to see these events lining up, you need to figure out where are you gonna be at lunchtime? Are you gonna be at home? Are you going to be in the car for at like your normal dinner time? So if you normally eat dinner between five and six, where are you going to be between five and six most nights of the week? Are you going to be sitting at a practice? Are you at an event? Are you at a basketball game for one of your kids? Are you at a wrestling match? Um, are you driving and you're in the car, you're commuting? So once you know where you are, then you can start to plan more strategically what you need to have with you, what you should be eating during those times. Because the last thing that you want is to be going somewhere or to be stuck in the car when that hunger comes on and you're not even close to being home. That's where people tend to get off track because you're so hungry. And then if the kids are saying something to you, you're just, it's easier to cave into peer pressure and to hit up a drive through or something that you know is just unhealthy and is not going to do you any good. So knowing where you're at and planning for that will help you. So 
Tuesdays is a long night. So we leave the house, I think around like 4.30 to go to dance. Mark and I sit in the car and we wait for Sophie because otherwise we're getting home for 10 minutes and then we're driving back to get her. So we sit in the car and I have a my yogurt cup with me. So my afternoon snack I pack and take with me and I eat it in the car because I know that I'm not going to be home to eat dinner until about 7.30. Um, between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. So that snack at about 5 o'clock is going to help hold me over for another two and a half, three hours. And I always have water. For Mark, it's kind of the same thing. He'll bring his veggies from the day and he'll eat them in the car while we're sitting there waiting for her. So that's something that you guys can start to think about. Can you have something with you? Um, the other thing to think about when you're looking at your calendar is, okay, how much time do you have when you get home from your whole day to make dinner? So on Tuesdays, we don't get home until 7.30. Sophie's karate is from 6.30 to 7. It's all the way out on Route 51. So by the time we get home, it's like 25 after 7. And she has to go to bed at 9 o'clock. And she has to get a tubby. And we have to do the whole bedtime routine. So we don't have time to mess around. Um with making some big elaborate meal. So I need something that can be done in 10 minutes or less, or that's a crock pot meal that I'm literally taking the lid off and scooping onto a plate. And those are types of things that you can think about as well. Um, crock pot meals, casseroles that just need like a quick reheat in the oven, um, 10 minute meals like tacos is super easy to do, burgers, um, frozen vegetables, minute rice bags, rotisserie chicken, BLTs. Those are all easily executable in 10 minutes if you have a little bit of the prep done. So if you're having tacos, your taco meat should be ready to go. Your lettuce should be topped, chopped up. Your tomato can be chopped up in advance. A bag of um, shredded cheese is going to help you. A jar of salsa. So if you have all that stuff ready to go, that's going to be something that you can do when you get home from after a long day of being with the kids and working or whatever else that you do. So the next thing that you want to think about, so that's your calendar and what events that you have during the week and how much time you have before your meal, after your meal, and where you're going to be during that meal period. The next thing that you want to think about is, do you have a predictable schedule on certain days of the week? So I'll give you an example. I work full time, but two of the days I get to work from home. So on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I go into the office. And so Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, breakfast through my mid-afternoon snack are identical. I eat the exact same things. So for breakfast, I have a shake and I will switch it up. I'll put different things in it. I'll make it different flavors. So it's different, but it's still, that's what I have for breakfast. And then for my mid-morning, I have hard boiled eggs and an apple. Then for lunch, I'm this week I'm having an egg frittata and orange and some peanuts. And my afternoon snack is veggies and hummus every single day. It's not supposed to be fancy. It's just fuel that gets me through the day. So I'm not going to stress myself out about it and try to figure out, okay, well, what should I have on this day? If you're the type of person that needs to eat something different every day, that's fine. You can switch it up. But what I'm telling you is when you're just getting started, you want to keep it simple. So don't go overboard. If you just need to have veggies, switch up your veggies. If you don't want to have an egg frittata, then use a yogurt cup or use hard boiled eggs or use cottage cheese to swap out your proteins. You can still make it interesting and different, but you don't have to go nuts over it. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's my day that I work from home. So again, I have my shake for breakfast. Then I have a piece of fruit and cottage cheese. I have a big salad for lunch. Um, and then I have this cho what I call chocolate chip yogurt as my snack. So it's Greek yogurt, it's almond butter, it's a teaspoon of mini chocolate chips, and um, two squares of a graham cracker crumbled up in it. It's amazing. So if you've never tried it, you need to try that because it will change your whole snacking um, attitude in general. But that's what I have on Tuesdays and Fridays because I'm home and you know I can I don't want to take my salad dressing and all that extra stuff to work. So I eat that on those days. And then you just plan your dinners around those meals. So that's my predictable schedule that I build my meal plan around. So do you have a schedule like that that you could um, 
make similar foods and meal plans so that when you are planning and you're prepping, it's really easy for you to do. So I know I need two salads for myself every week. I need three containers of veggies and three containers of hummus. I know I need, you know, three oranges to be cut up. I need three apples. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I can look at that meal plan and say, okay, I need three apples. I need three oranges. That also will help you with your grocery list. So you know exactly what you need to buy and it'll save you money from having to, you know, overbuy or underbuy um, and end up wasting food. Can you do, so this is my third tip, can you do a planned theme night throughout the week? So like meatless Monday. So on Mondays we might want to do, like every Monday we might want to pick a meatless meal. So like fish, maybe we want to do tofu, maybe we want to do spaghetti squash. You could do that if you really wanted to. Taco Tuesday. Every Tuesday we have tacos, pretty much every Tuesday. So whether it's a taco salad, it's an actual taco with um, ground turkey, you can do tacos with chicken, you can do tacos with fish. I mean you can make it different every week so that it's not like the same kind of taco, but at least I know on every Tuesday we're having tacos. It's not hard. And you can even switch out the shell. Maybe you want to do romaine lettuce um, tacos. Maybe you want to do like a pita taco. You could do whatever that you want, but you always know that it's going to be tacos and it's going to come with lettuce and tomato and salsa. Um, Fridays, we do pizza. So we don't order out pizza, but we will make whole wheat pita pizzas. We'll use non- um, bread pizzas. We did whole those like whole wheat thin pizzas to like kind of mimic like a pizza bagel feel. Um, and then every now and again we'll order pizza. So maybe you want to do something like that. But we know every Friday we're having pizza. Even if we go out to eat, which we don't hardly on Fridays, but if we're out somewhere for some reason, like we're like we want pizza because that's what we have on Friday. It's pizza night. And so those are just different ways that you can help yourself put together a meal plan that is not going to stress you out or drive you crazy. Like that's the last thing that you need. There are so many more important things to do. Your food is to fuel your body. Like that's its purpose. The fact that like people want to make these elaborate meals and, um, you know, always like stressing out about your family. Like, listen, you just need to get your family like on board. And it, that might just take some slowly incorporation of some of these meals um, and swapping out a few things a little bit at a time. But that doesn't mean you personally can't still eat different, a little bit differently than them. I mean, you're probably all eating the same proteins and I'm sure you're trying to get them to eat veggies. And so you just make things that everyone likes and just portion your stuff out. That's all that you have to do. Don't stress out about, well, I can't eat healthy because my family doesn't. That's not true. You totally can and you don't have to make something completely different. Um, and if you have questions about any of that, then those are the types of things that we work together as when I'm your coach and we're working one-on-one -on -one and we're in a group together because that's my job to help you make this easier. So that's what we're going to be doing next week when we start my Reboot Your Resolutions group. We're going to start at the basics. We're going to go through every one of these containers. We're going to talk about portions. We're going to talk about ideas on how to get them in and we're going to talk about um, meal planning and making this a sustainable lifestyle change. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I have got to run, get to the grocery store and get this day started. I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy Sunday. Um, spend some time with your family, but also get your food and stuff ready for you. Because if you're not performing at your top, um, you know, level, then how are you supposed to take care of the rest of your family? All right. See you guys later.